everybody. Thanks for joining us here on the ice on ASTV. Tonight's guest, he's been with the Dryden GM Ice Dogs for going on seven years. Now, we'll call that seven years because the last couple have counted, not counted. We'll leave that to remain. But Kurt Walston, the head coach, general manager of the Dryden GM Ice Dogs, joins me to discuss this different offseason and the preparations that have taken place thus far for the season beginning in the middle of September. Kurt is in Dryden right now, and we look forward to talking with him and discussing what has gone on and how the season might look a little different this year. So please welcome Kurt Walston, head coach, general manager of the Dryden GM Ice Dogs here on the ice. Kurt Walston, I hope I said your last name correctly. Did I? Yeah, no, correct. That's good. Good enough. I've been called a lot worse. So have I. And my last name's a little bit harder, but nonetheless, thank you for joining me here on the ice. Brought to you by Dokes Book Fuels, Case Financial Group, our friends at Pilot Mount Hockey Academy, and Toby Hockey. Kurt, we're getting the band back together. It's hockey season. How excited are you in the front office and the operation crew with the Ice Dogs? I'm sorry, Theo, that, like, it, it, I couldn't hear you. Sorry okay. About that. How, how excited are you and the coaching staff with the Ice Dogs this year? Yeah, no, we're really excited to be back this year. I mean, the last couple of years, we haven't been able to play in the playoffs. And, I mean, that's right across Canada. So anybody that has any hockey in their blood, if you're not excited to get back playing this year, I mean, you're not a – I don't think you're human. So, no, we're really excited here. Take a lot of hard work um you know right from us to obviously the the staff uh president vice president billet coordinators um you know all that stuff so we're ready to rock and roll this year um and i guess i would assume you know every team in our league is you know ready to go too so for us um our training camps next weekend we're on the ice friday morning so um yeah we're ready to go how many players potentially could come back from the previous team? Uh, we're, we're in pretty good shape there. I do believe we're bringing back 15. Um, and, uh, you know, last year is last year. So with only playing four games and totally different rules and everything like that, basically we have a whole team of, you know, rookies coming in here, whether they were here last year or not. So it's. Uh, uh, you know, what we did last year is last year, but, um, you know, what we told our players coming back this year is, you know, you got to put the work in and, and, you know, what you did last year is last year and this year is a totally new year. So, you know, we don't know what we're going to get. I mean, on paper, we're very happy with what we have coming back. Um, our recruiting this summer's you know, been good. So, like I said, on paper, this is probably the deepest team we've ever had, but, you got to get the guys here. You got to check out their character in the room, their worth ethic. Uh, you know, are they team players? Are they buying into what we're trying to accomplish here? So for us, we'll know that starting here next Friday. So you haven't seen the players together in Dryden. Have they been talking to you about their conversations off the ice, what they've been doing to prepare to show up next Friday? Sorry, sorry, Theo. Again, like so I caught the last. When you game, talk to some of the, when you up. when you talk to some of the guys before showing up to camp, what have you been initial impressions been? Well, good. Obviously, um, like everybody that we have coming here, they chose us first, you know, and that's the tough thing when you're out here, or you know, a lot of the kids that want to be playing out, you know, out west or whatever. So. Um, and I'm referring to BC, the AJ, just because they have the big budgets and all stuff like that. So, you know, for us, the kids we've recruited out here, um, it was easy for us this year. You know, they they wanted to come here and, you know, that's what we want. Um, so we're very happy with the recruiting this summer. We're really happy with the kids we got coming back. So, um, again, I'm not sure what the other teams are do, do, doing in our league or what they've done, but. Um, you know, talking to our guys on the phone, a lot of, some of them are here already, you know, and we're on the ice next Friday. So some of them drove in here, you know, Saturday night, some of them are coming in here Sunday. 
Majority of them are going to be in here Monday and Tuesday. Uh, a lot of them brought their golf clubs here and they're going to go golfing. And because they were here last year, they feel, I guess, comfortable with their billets and stuff like that, which makes it easier. And last year we had a really good, um, our room was really good last year. So all the guys that, you know, we're missing a few guys that were 20 that obviously we're going to miss, but the core guys coming back, their character is technically what a nice dog is. So they're all coming back. They're all fired up. So they should help out the younger guys we got coming in here right off the get go. Kurt, for your front office, what were some of the challenges this off season? Yeah, it was, you know, recruiting was like, even though we've recruited good and we're happy with it, recruiting for me, for let's say the time I've been here, this year has been the hardest just because the past two years, right across Canada, there has not been playoffs. So usually when you're playing in the playoffs and teams, whether they advance or they don't advance, you kind of know what you have. So a lot of times when guys are 19 and they're turning 20 the following year, the teams know what they're getting. And across Canada, um, each team is only allowed to play with so many 20 year olds. So it's easier. A lot of these teams, especially out West, they're putting guys on the wire and they're doing this because they know what they have coming back. Whereas this year, because there hasn't been playoffs the last couple of years, a lot of these teams are hanging on to all their players because they don't know what they're going to have. I mean, kids tell you they're going to show up whether they do or not. You'll find out in our case on Friday. So um, the wire this, you know, this, I guess you'd call it summer has been the least amount of kids on there that I've ever seen. So it's, you know, it's going to be very interesting this year how things all play out across the board. But again, like I said, we're very happy with what we have here coming into camp. A very exciting time. What should the players expect if this is their first time in Dryden? What does the community bring and what does the team bring to the community? Yeah, it's, it starts from the top down. I mean, everything we do, we do it with a purpose and you know, if we're putting in the hard work to, you know, have it, you know, a year like we're hoping to have this year. And this is our 20th season. The Ice Dogs have been in this league. So uh, Mike has a lot of stuff planned and, you know, extra stuff and all that kind of good stuff. So the kids were told when we talked to them that, you know, if you don't like hard work, then this is a wrong team to be coming to. Because, you know, every day, doesn't matter if you're feeling, you know, 100 percent or not. To play junior A hockey, you have to make sacrifices. A lot of these kids that are coming here, you know, they say they want to get scholarships or, you know, the few guys say they want to try the pro route. Well, things get a lot harder than, you know, if you're trying to get there than playing junior A hockey. So it's our job to get them ready both on and off the ice, you know, in the room, you name it. So the kids, when they're here, they're going to have to put some work in. They're going to have to make some sacrifices. I mean, we do have a few rules here, uh, you know, curfews. I mean, the guys aren't just running loose all hours of the night. So, um, you know, for some guys, it's easy to say it over the summertime. But then when you're actually here, and for a lot of these guys, they've never had to go on the ice every day for practice. They've never had to go, let's say, to the gym every day. Um, some of these guys think hard work, you know, what they did was hard work. And then they get here and they really see what hard work is. So it's, um, you know, it's that's why we're very excited about this year. Like on the phone, the talks have went great, but all the kids have been told up front what to expect, you know, coming here. And the easy part is saying you're coming here. The easy part is me signing you to a card. The hard part is being here at the end of the year. Absolutely. Hard work, perseverance management skills but the mentality the strength and the mental game has changed considering the last 18 months Craig, would you agree correct 100 percent. i mean you know back you know x amount of years ago you could get away with being a hockey player and they really didn't care if you were mentally tough or you know if you're um you know a good guy off the ice they just strictly look at your skill set and say well he can shoot a puck, you know, doesn't matter. You know, he's, you know, 
not the right guy in the room, but let's keep him because he can shoot a puck. Whereas times have changed now. And, you know, for us, obviously we're looking for skilled guys, but if you're a skilled guy and you're not buying in or you're a skilled guy and you're not, let's say, you know, a good guy in the room or you're a selfish guy or you're not willing to back check or, you know, follow a game plan, you won't be playing here this year. So, you know, for some guys it's going to be new and, you know, what we tell them, you might struggle a little bit early, but as long as you're putting in the work, everything's going to be fine. But, um, you know, you win as a team and you lose as a team. And, and obviously hockey's a team game. So what I tell the guys when they get here, if you like, you know, your teammates and you like what the room looks like out of training camp, put the work in and cause me, you know, the organization, no big problems off the ice and we won't make any changes. But if you're going to be a lazy team and you're causing problems and you're selfish and all that kind of stuff, well, then you're making my job a little harder, but I will make some changes because again, um, you know, these guys are coming here because they're trying to go somewhere in hockey. And if they follow the game plan and follow what the organization's trying to do, we give them a great opportunity to get to where they're trying to get to, but they have to make sacrifices. I mean, life in general you work hard, good things happen. You're lazy, you make excuses, you're negative, you like drama, you don't get to where you're trying to get to. So, um, you know, it's the same in the hockey world. Kurt, a couple years removed from Salon and Cup back-to-back -back championships, what does that mean to the Ice Dogs and the tradition in the 20 years being in the SIJHL? Well, it's like anything, you know, when we had those, uh, you know, teams, it was a team effort. It started right from our president and worked all the way down right to, you know, the billet coordinators or, you know, anybody associated with the team. Everyone put the work in. We didn't really have any drama. You know, our, we had one goal in mind and that was, you know, we're trying to make it to the finals. Then once you're in the finals, you're saying, you know what, we want to try to win the finals. And then, of course, when you're at the Dudley, um, you know, you're like, well, we're only a few games away from, you know, getting to the Royal Bank Cup. So, in those, you know, two years you're talking about there, you know, um, you know, the teams coming out of the OJ, they were ranked, you know, number one in Canada the one year. And I mean, we beat them there. So, um, you know, we did that because, you know, we were a hardworking team. The guys bought into what we were trying to accomplish. But the key is we had a good room those years where, you know, it didn't matter who scored the goal or whatever. Everyone was happy for that guy scoring the goal. But we did the little things and that's, um, you know, the way hockey's kind of been going, a lot of time those little things like the kids with their social media and you're watching every night the highlights, they really don't show you in the highlights, you know, getting a puck deep or chipping a puck or blocking a shot. They're showing you Ovechkin with the one-timer and all these, uh, you know, saucer passes and all this stuff. So then a lot of times these younger guys, they think that's what hockey is. And, and again, not anybody in this league is Alex Ovechkin. So, um, you know, when we were very successful there, it's because the guys were buying in. Like, you know, we work on cycling pucks. We work on how to block a shot. We use rubber pucks. We do all this, you know, what I call it old school, the little things. And those little things make the difference, especially when the playoffs come. So, you know, in those teams, someone would block a shot and they would get, a bigger response in the room in between periods than the guy that would score a goal. So it was those little things where, you know, good defense creates your offense, not cheating for offense. And, and, you know, because you score a highlight goal, but you're on the ice for three against, that's not helping your team to get to where you're trying to get to. So, you know, there's so many good teams in the NHL, for example, the Toronto Maple Leafs, they don't get out of the first round of the playoffs. So, that's the stuff that we go over right from the start when the kids are here. Um, you know, we have a package, uh, you know, we have a meeting early and we go through all this stuff because for some guys, they've never really been taught it before. So it's not their fault. So for us, we go back to, you know, right from basics when they get here and hopefully, you know, it takes about give or take a couple of weeks to a month and then they kind of figure it out. And then once they do, um, everything takes care of itself. So. 
old school hockey for the little things. I like that. I've never heard that before. I think that's great. I'm going to use that. Can I steal it? Yeah, sure. No, it just, and don't get me wrong. I mean, you know, you look at those years when we won for the goals for and goals against. I mean, we scored more goals than anybody's, but it's just, you know what, you start, um, and that's the way it was way back, but then they kind of, you know, in the last X amount of years, you're bringing in all that European stuff. And again, don't get me wrong. We do skill day and we, you know, we do all stuff like that, but what's good if you're doing stuff like that, if you forget about the little things and that's where for us, you know, back checking and, you know, helping out the goalie, the better the goalie, you know, less shots he has, the chances are, the better your stats are going to be offensively because, you know, if you're going in the third period and you're winning four to two, well, now that team has to cheat in the third period because it doesn't matter if you lose the game 10 to two, when you're losing in the third and we're losing, I open everything up because again, we don't care if we lose by 10 goals or one goal, a loss is a loss. So when a team is in our case, winning four to two going in the third period, the other team opens up and those years when we were successful, we would dominate in the third period because when they're cheating, they're exposed and we jump on them. So it's like you're in the jungle and you're a lion, you know, you're waiting for that deer to come walking through the trail and then we pounce on them. So, you know, that's what, you know, right from day one, when we're here, that's the stuff that we're going to be going over. And then we're going to see if we, you know, did the right job in recruiting to see if everyone's going to buy into that. Certainly, I love the analogy of the lion. I'm a big fan of blood in the water and we're a bunch of sharks. We'll come back with a quick break, Kurt. We'll talk about upcoming weeks as well as how exciting it's going to be for that puck drop for the first one in Dryden. Stay with us here on the ice. And we're back with Kurt Walston, GM, head coach of the Dryden Ice Dogs, GM Ice Dogs. Kurt, which hat do you like to wear more, the GM or the head coaching one? Or do you wear them both at the same time? No, you have to wear them both at the same time, eh? So, see, it's pros and cons to both. So, technically, the head coach, or if you're a coach, you're coaching the players that you have in the locker room or who's on the ice for practice. So, your job is technically, you know, you could say, well, I want so-and-so, I want this. But if they're not in the room, then you have to adjust your team to what the GM gets you. So when you're the GM, your job is obviously recruiting the players for that head coach or the coaching staff to coach. So if you're only the head coach and let's say you're losing games, what a lot of them do, they use the excuse to say, well, I have the players that I don't want and I can't coach with them where you know when you're the head coach and gm and mike comes up to me and says hey what's wrong with the team or how are things going i can't blame the general manager if i'm the gm i can't blame well i don't like what the coach is doing because obviously um you know you got both titles but you know it's um you know at the junior a level i do believe there's a lot more head coaches gms than just a head coach or a gm but like i said with, with us here I mean, it's it's a title that you said I am, but here it's a group effort, you know, from Mike, the president, to, you know, all our staff here. You know, we talk about everything. Um, we have a game plan before. Um, let's say we say this is the kind of team we want this year. And then, of course, it's my job as a GM to go out and try to get, you know, that type of team or those types of players. But, you know, for us here, it's a big, you know, it's a group effort. That doesn't mean we agree all the time, a hundred percent, but there's nothing wrong with that. When we go in, you know, let's say in the office and we're trying to, uh, you know, get players, we could agree to disagree. There's nothing wrong with that. When we leave the room, we're all on the same page and we're trying to, you know, get the goal that we're trying to get to. And in this case, you know, we do want to get back to the, you know, finals. We do want to win another championship this year. and. We- 
we do want to get back to the Dudleys. So um, that's our goal this year. And so far, like I, you know, like I said earlier, um, we feel we're in pretty good shape right now. Um, you know, if we had to start our team today, you know, we have 25 guys that can play in this league, um, you know, and, you know, for a lot of other teams, um, you know, when you don't play in the playoffs and you lose a lot of your 20 year olds and stuff like that, you have to, um, you know, replace them. So a lot of times, you know, when you're replacing players, if you're buying them on the wire, well, obviously that costs money. If you're, you know, getting junior B players, then you have to get their releases and that costs money and all that stuff. So, you know, a lot of teams have, you know, spent a lot of money right now getting players and they're still nowhere near of, let's say, having their 25 man roster where for us, you know, we did a pretty good job recruiting last year where, you know, we went younger last year. And it's paying off for us this year because, you know, we have the majority of those guys are all coming back. And, you know, we did lose a couple 20-year-olds that we are going to miss. But um, our team was in pretty good shape last year to bring these guys back. And then a lot of the recruiting we've done this year, you know, we're going after the younger guys too. So hopefully we have a good team this year. But we're also in really good shape for next year because, you know, we don't have um, you know, or, you know, we still got room to add some twenties if we choose to do that. And we have a roster right now where technically, and that's what Mike's going to like this is, you know, it hasn't really cost the ice dogs anything. If anything, you know, we made a few bucks in the summertime here. So like I said, on paper, we're looking pretty good. Um, but like they say, time will tell. Time will certainly tell next Friday camp starts for the opposite, for the Players that are looking to gain a spot with the Ice Dogs, how do they show the coaching staff that they belong in the SIJHL with the Ice Dogs? Well, well, we tell all the kids, like, see, our camp starts Friday morning, but all our kids are going to be in town by Thursday. So we booked two, we booked an hour ice for them where, you know, we're not charging them or nothing. They just they get to go on the ice check out the lighting, check out the boards, check out, you know, just everything, no pressure, uh, you know, shoot some pucks out there and all stuff like that. And then after that, we talk to the kids, you know, individually one by one. So for the guys that were here last year, they're going to know me, they're going to know the staff and everything, but we have give or take about 10 or so guys or, or 15 or whatever that number may be that, they basically don't know anybody. So we introduce them to, um, you know, our, our staff. We introduce them to or any questions they have. Obviously, we're going to answer them. We take their height and weight. And then what we tell them is, you know, for camp, we just want to see your effort. Like, that's one thing we can't control. Like, you know, if you can't shoot a puck that good or, you know, you cross over isn't the best or whatever, we can work on that to get better. The only thing we can't do is I can't jump in somebody's, you know, body and make them, you know, compete a hundred percent. So they're told right from the start on the phone, they'll be told when they're here Thursday, what we're looking for in this camp is your effort. You fall down. There's nothing wrong with that. Get up and, you know, keep working. You make a bad play. There's nothing wrong with that. Don't put your head down, bad body language, uh, banging your stick. You make a bad play, it's going to happen. Don't let that one bad play turn into two bad plays or three. So mentally, we tell them, keep your head up, be positive. And then physically, we want them to compete, to show the, show us that they want to be an ice dog. So how do you do that? By competing. So, um, you know, it's not a lot of structure here during camp. It's strictly, um, you know, for us, we did things a little differently this year because of COVID the last two years. We didn't want to have a big camp here where, you know, you're bringing in anywhere between 60 to 100 guys um, and, you know, all that stuff. So we kept our numbers down on purpose. So when we're here, um, we're, you know, everyone's going to, we, we're on two hours a day in the morning from 9 to 11. Then we have a goalie session with the goalie coach going on with the goalies from 1 to 2. Some of our guys will be on there to help out with the shooters. Then we go back on from 2.15 to 4.15. Um, everyone will be back on there. And, and after that, um, you know, one of those days we're going to have a beep test. The other day we're going to, after that, we go up to the high school. We'll do about an hour of dry land and a team stretch. So the long days, 
Um, but everything, like I said, what we're doing is it's, you know, it's for a purpose and we want to see what guys here right from the start, who's going to compete for us. So, um, that's gonna, you know, give us a little ideal. Some guys, you know, they don't like that. They don't like dry land or they don't, you know, going on the ice twice a day. Well, if those guys can't compete when they're here, well, then obviously we're not going to keep them here. So, so, like I said, everything we do, you know, there's a reason why we're doing it, but you know, for us. Uh, we're just telling the kids compete hard. You make a mistake. Don't bang your stick. Don't be swearing. Don't, you know, don't be throwing your stick or whatever you do. And sometimes kids, they have those habits when they come here and it's not that they're bad guys or anything. I call them bad habits where maybe where they played last year, that was acceptable. And, you know, so for us, we say, no, that isn't acceptable. And, you know, uh, for some guys, it just they have that bad habit in there and they just can't change. So they're a bad fit for playing here. But for some guys, they don't know any better. And, and you talk to them about it and then they understand and then they don't do it anymore. So, um, yeah, it's uh, what is I guess time will tell. Final thought, Kurt, before I let you go, we've got camp starting next weekend. That's first and foremost. But tell me what it's going to feel like opening puck drop regular season in Dryden fans in the stands team assembled coaching staff on the bench how are you going to feel and how excited are you going to be come middle of September yeah that's you know we're all looking forward to that like I said we've all put in a lot of hard work here this summer to give uh you know this experience you know for the kids and and all that but for us as a town or at least for us as our organization you know, we want to help people also that, you know, for the last two years, I mean, with all these lockdowns and all that, I mean, it's just not affecting, you know, a lot of these old people and everything. It's really affecting a lot of these young kids. And I mean, sometimes, you know, I see some of them, you know, when I'm walking through Walmart or whatever, and I make sure to always, you know, talk to them or at least say hi to them and ask them how they're doing and all stuff like that. So, you know, for us, that home opener, um, you know, we'll have 500 plus in our rink. Um, you know, Mike's done a lot of hard work along with our organization to, you know, give them a good show that night and everything like that. So, you know, for us, at least for our players, they're going to be ready. And when the puck drops, we are going to be, you know, competing 100% effort for that 60 minutes because not only are we playing for, you know, ourselves and, and the Ice Dogs, but for a lot of these people, they, you know, their team is the Ice Dogs. It's no different. You're living in Winnipeg and, you know, a lot of these young guys, they look up to the Winnipeg Jets. Well, for us here, a lot of these young kids, you know, you ask them, you know, what do you want to be when you grow older? They say they want to be Ice Dogs and everything. So we want to lead by example and, you know, we want to put on a good show for them. And then throughout the year, we have a lot of stuff planned for, you know, the, the, you know, these younger guys and the stuff that we're going to be doing to help them get, hopefully, you know, we're back to normal this year. And, but it's been hard on everybody. So, you know, for some people just to say it's the old people or, or you know, this, this, and this, I mean, this is affected, you know, dried in as a whole, right from top to bottom, young to old. And, you know, it's, we just, anything we can do to help people. Cause like you said earlier, I mean, this is affecting a lot of people mentally too. I mean, when everything on the news you basically hear is, you know, negative and, and all this, you know, stuff, we want, you know, to dry the nice dogs to be a positive thing this year to hopefully put some smiles on these young kids' uh, faces. And we hope when they show up at the rink, they forget about the last two years and, um, you know, all that good stuff. So that's kind of the way we're looking at it this year. Talk about the power of positivity. Uh, when it comes to rivalries, Kurt, you've been in the league for several years. Which rivalry do you look to renew the most? Well, that's tough. I mean, the years that I've been here, um, you know, most of the teams, they don't, uh, you know, their rivalry is with me and obviously the Ice Dogs here. So, you know, it's not like, you know, we play a certain team and, and you know, we do different things. I mean, we do, you know, we're pretty structured here and we have game plans and, you know, some of the teams, um, they're built differently. So if we're playing, for example, Red Lake, most of the years I've been here, they've kind of built their teams the same way we build our here. So 
it would be more of a physical, you know, game. So when we're getting ready for Red Lake and we go through video or, you know, when we're practicing, um, when we're working on our power play, we make our penalties killers kill the way Red Lake kills because we know how they kill. So that's how we work on that. And then let's say if we're working on our PK here and we're the ice dogs, we make our forwards or our power play, they're going to break out the way Red Lake breaks out. So, and then it's different if we play a team like Fort Francis, Fort Francis usually is more skill, like they're more, you know, let's say they don't like the rough going as much. So then when we play Fort, our game plan still going to be the same as in where we're going to compete hard, but our overall four check or what our game plan is, we tweak it a little bit because we're playing, you know, Fort. So to say who's, you know, our biggest rival, I look at, you know, when we, you know, when we're playing, we don't really treat anybody differently or, or, you know, whatever. It's just strictly for us. Our goal is, you know, doesn't matter who we're playing. We want to be the hardest working team in the league. We want to be, you know, the team that, you know, we leave it all on the ice. And when the game's over, we let it go. We don't make excuses. We're not complaining in the room or, or, you know, blaming the referee or anything like that. We have to take accountability. And if we lose a game because the other team outworks us, me as a coach, that's when I get upset. But, you know, if we work hard and overall we're following the game plan and we lose a game, there's nothing wrong with that. Then it's my job as a coach to change our game plan or execute better or whatever. But if we have a game plan and our kids aren't executing the game plan, we didn't lose because of the game plan. We lost because of the execution. So I got a little bit off topic there, but that's the stuff we go over earlier in the year. And then as for who's our biggest rival, I mean, you know, it just, you know, we've had, you know, good wars with Thunder Bay in the playoffs. You know, we've had good battles with, you know, Red Lake. We've had good battles with Fort, but sometimes battles don't necessarily mean it's, you know, physical and all this stuff. It's just a battle where it's, you know, it's a different, you know, team, different game, different everything. So who's going to be our biggest rival this year? I don't know. We, you know, we're not, um, you know, going to, take it easy let's say on anybody I mean our job is every time we're on the ice we want to work 60 minutes and if a team wants to beat us they're going to have to pay that price and you know outwork us and do the little things better than we're doing and um but I guess our biggest rival you know right now if you're saying who's going to be our biggest rival I would go with English River just because they're closest a lot of times when we play their fans come to our ranks when we play there our fans go to their rank so Right off the get-go, I'd say English River, but every team we play, I mean, I'm sure if you ask them, you know, they don't ease up when they know, oh, great, we're playing Dryden tonight. It's an easy night. I think it's more the opposite. They're going, hey, we're playing Dryden tonight. We better be prepared because if we're not, it could get ugly in a hurry type thing. So, and if we're doing that, then we're doing our job as an organization. So that's the way I look at it. Certainly, everybody is looking forward to having the SIJHL and all its teams return back to the ice this September. Kurt, one final thing. Anybody you'd like to thank for helping you organize, help out in Dryden with the team and your sponsors this upcoming season? Yes. No, I just I want to thank out everybody. And I mean, I don't want to waste, you know, I can go here probably 30 minutes and thanking everybody from Mike, our president, down to Eric, our VP, to the fundraising committee, to the billets, to the media, Tash and, you know, Mike Marino and, and you know, our billet coordinators, the coaching staff, um, you know, just all the billet homes to, you know, Steve at the rank. I mean, a lot of these people, um, you know, and most of them have families. I mean, for me, I'm not not married I don't have any kids I have a bull terrier and that's my family so I have a lot of let's say free time whereas a lot of these people they have families and kids and all that stuff and you know they um you know use some of that free time to you know help these players come with the ice dogs so that's why you know if these players are not going to commit to us 100 percent with effort they're not going to be playing here because like I said a lot of the people here in town They've made a lot of sacrifices with their time, with their effort, with their sponsors, you know, donating money to the team, 
to Dryden GM giving us a bus this year to you name it. It's, you know, that's for all our guys to, you know, try to help them get somewhere in hockey. So um, I want to thank the whole city of Dryden, you know, for everything they've done, you know, and I'm hoping we put together a, you know, a strong team so they can be proud of our team. But regardless, we are going to have a hard working team this year and all this wouldn't be possible if it wasn't for guys, you know, from Mike all the way down to, you know, it's not like, you know, there's a more important title. It's a lot of people, you know, did a lot of stuff to make this happen. And for me, I just want to thank, you know, all those people and, um, I'm looking forward to getting to the rink and I hope to see a lot of these people at the rink, um, you know, for the whole year. And obviously I Kurt want to thank you for doing a role like you do. Um, you know, it's, it's, you know, I can't say that enough. A lot of shows like you get the word out and there's a lot of people, you know, that let's say don't know about the SI or don't know, you know, what junior a hockey is. So because of the stuff that you do, and again, you're doing it and it's not like, you know, we're paying you to put us on there or you're making all this money doing it. So I really want to thank you along with everyone here in Dryden to make this possible. Well, I look forward to seeing the season start, not only with Dryden, but also all the teams in the SI. Uh, maybe a maybe a road trip, perhaps. I'll see. Maybe a personal road trip to come visit these teams on the weekend would be great. Um, and I'm sure I'll be met with open arms. Right, Kurt? You better believe it. You want to come here, let me know. And obviously, you've talked to Mike before, and I'm sure he can hook you up here. And, uh, you know, you came here. It's one thing watching a game on the computer, but it's another thing when you get in the Dryden dog pound here and you're in there. It really is a good experience. Like, I've been doing this technically my whole life. And, um, you know, it's – I really like playing here at home and, and, you know, the atmosphere and just the rank and everything. You know, fans are right on you there. And, uh yeah, you come down here, we'll, we'll show you a good time. I appreciate it. Kurt Walston, the head coach, the general manager of the Dryden GM Ice Dogs, joining me here on the ice. I'd like to thank our sponsors, Dokes Fuels, Case Financial Group, Toby Hockey, Pilot Mount Hockey Academy. Always bringing more goodness to the greatness. Thank you, Kurt, very much. We'll say goodbye. Good luck to the beginning of the season. And, of course, keep the sticks down on the ice. Keep the mitts on, the hands. And the good Lord willing, we'll have a full regular season. How's that sound? Perfect. Sounds great to me. Thanks, Theo. Take care, everybody. Thanks for watching on ASTV. Have a great rest of your evening. Take care of your family. Take care of your neighbors. And bye-bye for now. Welcome to Pilot Mount Hockey Academy, your world-class academic and hockey training facility created to maximize each student's athletic and academic potential. Blackjack Stewart Arena, home of the Buffalo, is inside the 46,000 square foot complex, as well as a curling rink and other facilities. The students have a unique combination of successful, well-rounded education at Pilot Mount Collegiate Institute and the professional hockey training in an encouraging community. The years of experience of on ice coaching propel our students to the next level both mentally and physically in a professional environment.